So welcome, thank you for coming um, on such a gorgeous day, a spring day. In this artist talk, I would like to share with you a brief background which has directly influenced this current body of work, Footpath Forest. I will also like, uh, like to talk about what com um, compels me to create where my ideas originate and how I incorporated them into my work. I will touch upon a significance of meaning in my art from various points of view, philosophical, historical and personal. So I'd like to begin with Clement Greenberg, 20th century American art critic, who said, an artist must know every work within his or her genre, otherwise how would it be possible to tell if he or she has extended it? This is a question which is always in the forefront of my mind and at the end of the process of each painting. For me it is the hardest question and the hardest critical view to take. The late Geoffrey Smart uh, and revered Australian artist said in an interview that one always does the same thing all one's life really. You just hope to get better doing it. I've actually got some um, a board made up for, for this and I haven't got it here. Where is it? It's just hanging at the side. I've, I've got to bring it. But anyway, it's, it's being brought over. I recently came I can across... I'm being a boy. It's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yes. I recently came across a number of drawings which were tucked away and forgotten. They reveal a five-year-old growing up in Jerusalem. There is a definite connection in terms of the current subject matter. There are houses, buildings, tables and chairs and trees. The urban Jerusalem seems from a child's, uh, seen from a child's point of view. I can see the similarities to many of the paintings in this uh, exhibition, particularly parachute, the painting Parachute Jump from the Dream, which is over, over on that one. I'm just pointing to, to that area. Um, some houses have, have chimneys, but there, there were no chimneys in existence in Jerusalem. Is this a literary influence in these early drawings? I can only guess that this element came from picture books of European fairy tales. Certainly, I have, um, inf uh, uh, I have been influenced. I'll have to drink. I have been influenced by literary elements in, in the current work, which uh, I will talk about later. <laughs> sprouting trees scattered in these early drawings. Sim similarities between these trees and canopies in the current work reveal themselves particularly in the painting the, real, the, the rain wheels in the sky which is just around this corner here and the work on the paper, big one, right? the big one, that, yep that one, he's not bringing it over is he? <laughs> How easy it is. It's a great hanging system here, yeah, brilliant hanging system. Um, so, so uh, and the work on paper, new extension. <laughs> You're not bringing that one as well. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay. I'm on strike. <laughs> 
So, so I, I arrived in Australia in the early 70s to live with my sister and brother-in-law, who became my guardians. Lindley, my brother-in-law, was in the business. Um, uh, he's uh, the business partner of uh, Bolwell Corporation, a company that created the first fiberglass car in Australia, sports car in Australia, called the Nagari. It is one car which is well etched in my memory. I worked in Bolwell, in the Bolwell factory during school holidays, cleaning and tidying up in the office. It was very dusty. During those years, I took time with great, great curiosity to look um, at many moulds of cars, the rolls of fiberglass sheets, the spray equipment and other equipment which looked like um, items from outer space. Gina, my sister, Lily and I, also frequented car races at Calder Race Course, where a more glamorous uh, event took place, where models were draped over bonnets for photo shoots. So when people ask me why I draw and paint cars, this is the reason. I grew up surrounded by cars, by the car manufacturing process. So cars have more meaning for me than just something to drive in. I saw a glimpse of the creative part along with the economic logistics of manufacturing. So moving on to art school where the light bulb was turned on for me. During my second year I discovered Vermeer. Vermeer's work was concerned with scenes from everyday life uh, during the 17th century. I learned from his work about tone, it is extremely important part of my current work. Tone that describes areas of light and shadow. Two examples in this exhibition are far, um, are far amongst the, the forest trees, and it's further out over there, and uh, where the light soars to a drink. At that time, the Vermeer painting that I paid homage to was Lady writing a letter with her maid from the 1670s. It has powerful verticals in, in, the, comp in the composition. <laughs> Matisse, together with formal study of 13th um, and 14th century Indian miniatures, led to a further interest in colour and structure. For me, a stimulating and ambiguous connection. Matisse works were a focal point, and still life with oranges from 1899 brought to light a strong effect of pure and exaggerated colour. So the painting, paintings in this show, oil tanker, panel van, and P.O. box, in, um, bear that early um, influence. That's the, yep, follow Terry's <laughs> lead. Moving on to the 80s and 90s, I work with themes dealing with departure and the voyage. The work took on a symbolic aspect. I explored the themes through fairy tales and Greek mythology. This work was well received at the time and one of these works was exhibited at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. My urban scape work was also exhibited at the, at the later date in the same gallery. So now I paint not as a migrant, but as someone who has settled in a new land. This brings to mind 1852 when Von Gerard arrived in Australia. He stayed, settled in Ballarat and became one of the fathers of Australian landscape tradition. Another example of, of validation of place is Frederick, uh, Frederick McCubbin's painting, The Pioneer, which some of, most of you should be aware of. It's in the National Gallery. Um, this painting is made up of three panels. The first dealing with the land, the second with the cottage, 
And the third, which particularly interests me, is a landscape with a glimpse of a city, as if seeing the urban future in the far distance. All these influences and connections serves paths to new perception, and that is of the here and the now. So a list of, of artists who have captured their own essence of place is a long one. But let me mention a few you would be familiar with. Monet painted near his home near Giverny, Cezanne and Aix um, and Provence, Van Gogh and Arles, Gauguin in Tahiti, Bord in Shoalhaven River, um, Clarice Beckett painted um, scenes of Melbourne. Hers were patches of colour, of tonal uh, perception, and colour did not serve for her as an expressive element. Rick Amor conceived his Melbourne as almost decaying. Howard Arkley's concerns were embedded with abstract sensibilities. So looking at all these artists, I have taken the hardest view, and that is really important. What is my contribution to the, to the genre? You as a, uh, as a viewer could also ask the same question. So the third and last section to, to this talk is the significance of the subject matter in relation to process in my work, the creation of the work. So Footpath Forest, the current exhibition, has been influenced by a location near my residence, which has been termed the local, by the local council the urban forest. It is an Australian native nature strip that runs between the light rail tram line and Canterbury Road from Albert Park towards St Kilda. So in preparation for the new work, I begin with an idea the consideration of a newly found relationship between two elements, the ambiguous connections between two or more things such as table and car, foreground and distance, and the urban forest and the umbrellas that sprout among the urban cafe society, as if alluding to the natural forest we seldom experience. For me, canopies stand erect, nourished by constant footpath traffic. Under the canopies, people are immersed in their own dreams. The canopies are calling us to sit and relax and be nurtured by local offerings. <laughs> I take those ideas as, and I use a camera as an aid. The photograph creates a direct relationship to reality to the extent that we accept the actuality of what we can all see. It sets the relationship between the present and the past, moment in space or time that it represents. But for me, painting is the thing that creates ultimately the new perception in the present moment. I continue with um, thumb, thumbnail sketches uh, like the ones at the entrance uh, hanging by the door. It is a visual thought process. I work often with charcoal drawings and move to a composition using colour of paper. When it is time to move onto canvas, I begin with an underlying geometric structure. I hang the conceived urban shapes on the equivalent to a coat hanger to create a structure. What I mean by that is Fred Williams was known to say that he used the landscape so just so he could hang the painterly and the pastel marks on it. I hang the found urban shapes on the underlying structure. If you look closely at some of the drawings in this exhibition, you could see an indication of an underlying structure. So Leonardo da Vinci believed that through geometry, the principles regulating the composition 
of a painting were established. He based all composition on harmonious scheme using triangles, arc, spiral, trapezoid, as in the painting of Saint Jerome. So I work with horizontal, vertical and diagonal lines. I work with shapes such as triangles and the rhombus. Let's take a centre stage. Diagonal lines are there to convey a feeling of movement. Now colour is the object in my work. The chief function of colour is to serve expression. I begin with chaotic spectral colours. A cacophony of pure colour, hush, discordant, like deafening alarm bells. Once this is in, few, in full view, I begin, I begin to search for tranquil moments of tonal connections, a kind of symphony of tone. So the urban place has a rhythm. The cars, the umbrellas, the chairs, the noise, the people, all sprouting vegetation and trees. This rhythm finds expression within the repetition of pattern and fragmentation. Repetition creates a visual rhythm against which accents of interest are rediscovered. Repetition creates emphasis and comparisons. Sameness, a foundation for routines, which is the expression of tedium of daily life. So by repeating again and again, it can become something else. Andy, Warhol was, uh, Andy Warhol's work was based on grids and repeated images, sometimes with variation in colour schemes. What is of interest to me is the dynamics of colour relationships. <laughs> painting techniques used by the old masters. For example, in the painting Race Toward the Neon Line, which is the um, one by the door. <laughs> Terry's got to bring that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to rehang the exhibition, Terry, <laughs> later on. Oh, <laughs> so, um, so, for example, in, in this painting called The Race Towards the Neon Line, I have used the painting technique called sfumato, which is subtle blending colours in order to create a misty effect. So, another... <laughs> do you want to get another painting? <laughs> no, no, it's all right, it's all right, I'm joking. Another which painting one now? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great if we had a, a, a you know, audio-visual thing, but we... Let next slide. Which, which one is it, Rachel? No, 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 that's all right. Don't, don't, don't. Please, do, please sit there. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Tell uh, me which one. Okay, so another painting technique is cumbling. Um, no, they're all over, so it's not just one, it's, it's all over. <laughs> so you're off the hook. <laughs> um, so another, um, another painting technique is called scumbling. So this is a rough application of thin opaque colour over an earlier layer of paint. It is applied so thinly that it is translucent, so colour below can be seen as if uh, through a veil. I employ this technique in some of the shadows and, and the compos uh, in the composition, so you'll have to look at wherever there is some shadows you might find that uh, scumbling technique. I'm interested in unity the overall harmony of the whole. Now, Pizarro said, unity is what the human mind gives to vision. His teacher, Corot, said that unity is achieved through values, tonal relationships. Values, he said, are the constituents of unity. The, the great task of the artist is to bring everything 
into the harmony of the whole. In accord, sky and man-made structures, paths and roads. It is linking the foreground and the background up and down, left and right, figure and field, saturating the composition with the chords. A little bit like what we hanker for in life, I think. <laughs> Rapport of tones. When they are all there, the picture models itself. So, in terms of subject matter, I use metaphors, hence the title of the exhibition, Kupa Forest. Also, the titles um, of each work are appropriated from Thomas Tranströma, a Swedish 2011 Nobel Prize poet. These titles are there to trigger further ideas. Through his poetry, I have connected two separate references, his poetry and my subject matter, in order to generate new meanings. Once again, seeking to engage through the consideration of a newly found relationship between the two elements. So this juxtaposition produces for me new connections, a stepping stone into a realm which was unintended. <coughs> that brings an element of surprise right at the end when the painting is completed. So my ideas for this exhibition originate with the urban city in juxtaposition to the urban forest which has become, I believe, our common fate. But through the urban regime, we can create a common advantage, as referred to in Don Henry's enlightened speech at the opening last week. What compels me to create is to continuously renew my awareness of a sense of place. It renews my perception and I welcome others to bring their, their own connections and associations. So when that happens, the artwork becomes active. Mm -hmm. 